Welcome to the Mind Matters Show. I'm your host, Dr. Craig Palman. We are in Orlando, Florida at APA 2012. This is the final show that we're uh, broadcasting here. We brought Southeast, Southeast Psych Studios to the convention floor, and my guest today brought his A-game, Dr. Trey Ishii. <laughs> we're going to talk about an area of expertise for Trey, which is prospective memory. So, Trey, take us through a quick definition of prospective memory. So if you, if you make a, a distinction between retrospective and prospective memory, retrospective memory being memory for the past, um, dates, how to do things, procedural memory, uh, versus memory for the future, remembering to do things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's prospective memory. So those are not, it's not just a different way of talking about memory. Those parts of memory are in different places in your brain. The, the distinction between prospective memory load and responsibility. In school, you hear them talk about responsibility. And what they mostly mean is prospective memory load. It's keeping up with things and being responsible. I mean, there's some character part of it. But really what they're mostly, the, those two terms, responsibility in school in terms of keeping up with stuff and, and managing yourself, materials management and all of that, really is prospective memory load. Here we have a graph here. So we, we start off kindergarten. And then, we, you know, we could go every grade, but just for simplicity. And it, it goes up over time, right? So talk about responsibility or prospective memory load for kindergartners. Teachers and parents do most of the, you know, the, the, the teachers pack up your homework, you bring it home, uh, parents unpack it, do it, pack it back, you know, you're just a little mule. You don't have a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. that way. Now let's go up to sixth grade. One of the things that they might do for the first time around their, their academics is that might be the first age that, that a child's using an agenda, mm -hmm. that that prospective memory responsibility to write down their homework, to be a part of the planning process and keeping up with things really might really start. All right, so let's go to 12th grade. So by the 12th grade, you're getting pretty close to what we would think of more adult uh, prospective memory load re requirements of, of writing down your homework, turning in your homework, um, maybe in, in the 9th and the 10th, and, and maybe in the 11th grades, there's more reminders about things along the way in the process of doing a project or writing a paper and you know, turning in outlines. And around your senior year, that's, that should start going away a little bit. So let's go through uh, some tips some ways to help people, help kids who have trouble with prospective memory. Routines, 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 doing the same thing the same way every morning. Morning routines, evening routines, um, packing things up, you know, that sort of thing. Um, we talk a lot about doing everything in one room and not, you know, you get up, you go to the bathroom, you do all the bathroom stuff, you don't leave the bathroom until that's done. Um, you go into your closet, you do all, you know, all the bedroom stuff, you go downstairs and you do, you know, you're not going back upstairs because you've done all the upstairs stuff. Um, even you know, eating breakfast, not going back upstairs to brush your teeth because it's easy to get lost along the way. And it seems like if you have some well-established routines right. and there's something, you can insert something into that routine sure. that's important. Right. Uh, like Call that embedding. Embedding, okay. Well, let, let me give you an example then that I guess is an example of this. Um, I, was, I was talking with one of my college students and he was forgetting to take his meds every morning. And so I said, what's one thing that you know you will not leave your dorm room without doing. And I, I assumed it was going to be brush his teeth or, I don't know, check his, check his messages. And it was put on deodorant. He said there was no way he was going to leave his room anytime without putting on deodorant. So he put his medication next to his deodorant. Strategies for unforeseen prospective memory tasks. What, 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 what's that all about? So there are things that happen every day. But then there's the stuff that's not predictable. There's the stuff that only happens every once in a while. Your teacher says you need to stop in this afternoon and because you didn't you didn't have time to finish the test she said that's okay you can stop in this afternoon and and finish the rest of the test that's out of your routine that's not a predictable thing you have to have a process you have to have some way to collect that kind of information and so that you know that you'll remember it I mean, isn't a lot of this can a lot of this be solved with a post-it note to the degree that post-it notes are reliable and you remember to look at them right right so that's one of the great things about technology at this point with the iPhones and, and all the digital reminders. We do talk about a lot of use of technology for this sort of thing, but there is also the low tech stuff. And sometimes if that's the answer, that's the answer. But, but, but something, you know, again, like a post-it note is not going to work unless you put the post-it note at a strategic spot so that you're going to see it no matter what. And it's a, maybe it's a particular color that you use for those kind of reminders. You know, they're, they make post-it notes of every, every color these days, so mm -hmm. you can get red post-it notes for those emergency sort of things that you really have to remember. Very interesting stuff. Thanks a lot for, for talking about this. Let's play another game. We like to play games of the Mind Matters show. And we're going to play a game called Trey versus Koval. Do you know more than your first grader? All right. 
Now, unbeknownst to you, Trey, I contacted your wife, and she worked with your son, who's going into first grade. Coble is his name. Uh, great, great guy, red hair, very active youngster. And he came up with a question for me to ask you. Are you ready for it? The question is, why is a lion scared of a cheetah cub? Why is a lion scared of a cheetah cub? Because the cheetah mom might be around? So that's going to get a big, uh, from Coble. The answer is because a cheetah cub has stripes down its back, and the lion thinks it's a honey badger. And as, as we all know, it's common knowledge, the honey badger is the toughest animal in Africa. So sorry, Coble wins this round of Trey versus Coble. But you're a good sport. Good job, Coble. Thanks a lot, man. All right. From the Mind Matters Show at APA 2012 in Orlando, I'm your host, Dr. Craig Pullman. Thanks a lot, everybody.